Hello and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. Um, we are gonna sleep. <laughs> true, true to our word, true to the name. We're gonna sleep. Just wanted to have a quick look at Ethan's tab, um, just to see what that's all about. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to keep tabs on that. You're welcome. All right, end the cycle. How much is our condition lowering? It didn't, uh, it seems like it didn't at all. Interesting. I guess it does tell me how much my condition will lower. Um, so let's see, what can we do here? Build a home, gather scrap at the unit. Um, we do have a scrap freighter, so we could throw some money at this. So why don't we go ahead and do this for now? Um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and buy at least two scraps. And another one. And we got ship mine fragment instead. Well, that's no good. Um, we're gonna go ahead and buy the third one. We are, we're only allowed three. Wow, we got two ship mine fragments. That's honestly awful. Um, but whatever. Freighter crew are eager to get their payload into the ore exchange. They'll pay a wage to anyone. You know, we don't need a, a wage. What we need is scrap. Let's go ahead and throw some scrap at our derelict unit. Just to, just to get that done with. All right. Plus one scrap pile. No, I don't, I don't think so. So, oh yeah, that's, that's the, we're making progress on the actual storyline there. That's what that means. Uh, and then we're going to want to sell our extra, um, Fra uh, fragment or our, our, our ship mind fragments what, what are these called well whatever we're selling them it might be a good idea for me not to sell them i'm, I'm feeling like since we already have the ship mine core it seems to me we're probably going to need more than one ship mine core so maybe i shouldn't sell them but we do recoup some of our losses there a bit so uh let's also get a bite to eat we still need these gyro fricassee mushrooms. Let's grab some food. Actually, I guess we could have worked for that, but we don't have, uh, we don't really, we really don't have good rolls today. So we're probably just going to spend our time today, um, doing some data mining. We only uh, seem to have triangles. Triangles tend to be, okay, well, yet again, agents, we can definitely make use of that. So let's throw let's throw our three at this one. We'll uh we'll want to spend uh get the spend our Yadigan data progressing our uh, our new storyline, which I cannot remember. Um side rail real ticket, I don't think that's it. Help Fang Fang Chase's lead. Well that's fine. Um, okay, so we can't get this Yadigan agent, unfortunately. It's a two and a three, and we have two, th uh, sorry, it's a one and a three, and we have two twos. Uh, what can we do here? What about this, uh, Havengid, uh, sorry, H Havenage, Havenage agent? We can do this. Easy enough. And I'll try and, um, collect and keep our Havenage data as well and not sell that. Let's do this one as well. Um, we are progressing. Every time we do this, we are progressing towards the hunter again. Worth worth noting, but um, we'll we'll get out. We'll get out unscathed today, at the very least. We only have one more lead left in our data. We've kind of scrounged everything, which is fun. Um, so let's see, Doc C4, I don't think there's anything at Doc C4. C4. Um, can we progress Fang? Ever since your trip to the shipyard, Fang has been missing from his bay. What's going on? Well, that's not good. That's really not qu uh, quite, quite bad. Rotunda, can we do anything here? Explore the rotunda. Steal Doc plans, interesting. 
Um, let's engage into it. Those are something we'll, I guess we'll focus on those later. I like, uh, I like what we've currently got going on. Caster, that's the one we're, we're trying to progress. So I have two of each data, um, uh, Yadagan and, uh, Havenage or Havenage. So I think we're actually done. I don't think there's anything else we can do right now. We're in, uh, we're kind of in between storylines right now. We're very likely going to bump into the hunter very soon. We got a re again, rolled pretty badly, to be honest. Um, and I don't think I can actually even collect data with us. We do have some new triangles. What do we got here? Haven, uh, Havenage agent. And over here, Yadigan agent. Well, let's throw our one at this uh, yet again. We'll, this will progress us to, uh, towards the hunter. We'll have an, a hunter encounter. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but uh, it might it might be a bad thing. Those familiar threads wrap around you, bind you, test you. Entity, submit. Hunter's strange head bobs in your vision. Your ally in the sealed dock cannot save you. In that globed head, <clears throat> you see whirling strings of data, so many spinning that they threaten to tear through this, the thin skin and whip out into the void around. What happened to this creature? The threads squeeze and you lose any sympathy you might have had. You must escape. You lash out once more, pushing Hunter back, severing threads that regrow as fast as they are broken. As you slip away, you realize you have to find a way to deal with Hunter once and for all. This is getting too dangerous. Not sure what that means in the grand scheme of things, but we got our data. We need two more yet again um, in order to uh, progress caster. This is a two and a three. We have a two, so we'll go ahead and get some Havenage a uh, agent data. Nice. Um, we are at two on our condition, so I think today uh, by whatever means we can, I will, uh, get ourselves, um, our next dose of stabilizer. So why don't, why don't we do that now? We're just short. We're just shy of, of getting some more. So why don't we go to, um, unit assembly. This is, uh, we can make some money here. Some good, decent money. Uh, you earned a place on the team welding these blocks together. Um, block by block Systems fitting or structural fitting. I'm not sure which is better. Your job is to lay these systems in uh, I'm sure they're both pretty equal But either way, they're gonna be a guaranteed win. We'll get some money 12 Cairo uh, or Creo, I guess I have I been saying Cairo this whole time Cryo I'm not sure anyway um, we have enough now that we can get our next dose. Plus one stabilizer. Pass key for an apartment found tucked inside a stabilizer vial. What is this? Corporate pharmaceutical, which slows the decline of sleeper frames. As you quickly leave the surgery, eager to be away from Toshiro's glare, you notice something wrapped around the stabilizer vial, clutched tightly in your hand. You open your hand in a thin film, marked with holes and sigils, and unrolls from around the vial. At one end, it has a hard metal strip, a handle. Inspect the film. You hold the cloudy film up to the light. It is perforated with an ornate pattern of holes. You can make out, make out a word among the markings. Pass key. Is this an entry key for somewhere? Inspect the handle. The metal handle is worn and pitted, but you can see a set of numbers imprinted into it. 207F, and then crudely scra uh, scratched into the handle at some later date, low end. For a moment, you consider going back to the surgery to return the key, and then quickly think better of it. Did Sabine want, uh, want you to have this, or is Tashiro passing on a message? Time to head to the low end and find out. 
and we got an upgrade point. I'm going to keep that because I want to get either self-repair or icebreaker, depending on uh, what feels right at the time. But we're out of money, so that's going to be a problem. Especially considering we need money for our, our compressor club to, 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 to pay off our, hunt, our, our tracker. Um, but we can check this out. Maybe that's the last time we'll have to buy a uh, stabilizer. Maybe we can get it for less. As you push the door open, the automatic lights flicker on inside the apartment. They revealed yellowing plastic panels, the curved shape of wall-mounted utility units, the detritus of a routine life arranged on every surface. You step inside, clicking the door shut behind. The amber light of the aging fixtures glaze everything with pale orange. The work surfaces hold a variety of objects, indistinct in the dull lightning. Sorry, lighting. A pale blue light drifts from a doorway at the end of the room. Inspect the surfaces. Smudges through the thin layer of dust suggest a recent rare and hurried visit. They trace a path, a path to the water dispenser, the auto wash, then to a cabinet still half open. On the shelf sits an empty pill case. Go to the doorway. You cross the cramped utility room with its auto wash, dispensers, water closet, uh, towards the doorway. Through the doorway is a dark, warm room, lit only by the faint glow of a terminal screen. Inspect the room. A bunk is tucked into the wall. Um, the blankets ruffled. A wall desk glitters with rows of vials and containers. A briefcase lab sits open, loaded with rows of regents and compounds you do not recognize. In comparison, this room is clean, ordered, and controlled. Approach the terminal. As you approach, there is a crackle from somewhere in the, room, uh, in the dark. Sleeper. Sabine's voice shakily echoes through the apartment. Welcome to my home. I'm sorry I can't be there. I have had to make alternative arrangements. You hear rattling noises, static. I was able to record this message, but I don't dare show my face. Something is happening with yet again. I no longer trust them. Their voice becomes distant, slipping behind the background noise. I have something to ask of you. I want you to get me out. Yet again, we're supposed to hide me, to protect me. After everything happened, I was desperate. And then after that, I was too tired to care. A noise like waves passes over the recording. But I'm done with them now. I want out. Screw the debt. I need insurance. Something I can hold against them. I have my suspicions, but I can't be sure. I need information. And as you know, you need me. A pause. Something clicking in the dark. This isn't a threat. You have to understand my position here. Another pause. I know sleepers. I have been here before. I can help you, but not with yet again's noose around my neck. Get me data. Get me information. Get me something that I can use against yet again. Then I can get out, and you can get what, what you need. Please. Waves of static cut into Sabine's voice. Bring it here to my terminal. I'll get to it when I can. You look around the tiny room and try to imagine Sabine living here. It might be Sabine A. I don't know. I've been struggling with that name since I started saying it. Working at the desk, sleeping in the bunk, blinking into the terminal in the dark. The recording cuts to static, filling the room with its white hiss, then silence. Access the terminal. You sit in front of the humming terminal uh, and hit a few keys. Sabine left uh, an access port open, but the rest is encrypted, locked away behind passcodes. It seems Sabine might not trust you as much as they think you, as much as they want you to think. Who does Sabine need to hide from, and what debt do they owe to Yadagan? You try to assemble the pieces, but too many are missing. The only thing you know is that without a stabilizer, your body will die. You glance at the briefcase lab on the desk, its glassware glinting in the dark. You turn away and leave, the door clunking shut behind you. Back in the to corridor, you notice the scrawled graffiti of a blade on the opposite wall, Yadagan. You feel yourself being drawn into something you don't quite understand. New drive discovered. Um, can I... Yeah, okay, so I can give Yetigan data here. And in fact, I have enough to progress this, so why don't we go ahead and spend it on this, and then um, use our Havenage data for Caster.
because this seems like it's going to be very uh, useful. As you turn away from the terminal, the fi final cache of yet again data uploaded, the air crackles with white noise. Sleeper? Sabine's voice, weaker than before, comes through the haze. Sabine? A sigh of relief comes through the layers of noise. The call must be coming in from somewhere on the station. This has to be short. I don't know if yet again are monitor monitoring me. Their voice is hushed, distant. You try to focus on it. The data you've been bringing in from yet again agents. There's something in it. I don't understand. A shrill howl rattles through the signal. This data is all gleaned from their implants, records of integration with their nervous systems, performance analysis, error rates, usage data. I installed many of these implants, and I didn't enable any of the functionality. Their voice dips under the level of the noise, like a swimmer slipping beneath the water. You listen to the waves for a few seconds before Sabine re-emerges. Has to be somehow baked into their wetware's interface, and that's not all. The systems compiling this the systems compiling this data are connected to some kind of transmission protocol. It's being broadcast. Why? Every yet again enforcer is equipped with black market implants, retinal enhancements, adrenaline boosters, pain suppressors. These implants are gathering data on themselves, on the enforcer's bodies, on their performance. Why? I can't tell. But I can promise you these foot soldiers have no idea what is uh, that this is going on. The background tone switches, dropping to a grainy, grainy rumble. If they knew, I don't imagine they would be happy with the situation. Yet again could have a mutiny on their hands. You lean toward the terminal, straining to listen to Sabine's faint voice. I need a few cycles to pull this all together, but this might be the information I need to pressure Yannick, Yannick into releasing my debt. Yannick? He is one of the heads of yet again. They pause. It is better you don't know him. Keep it that way. Suddenly, a banging echoes through the, the call. Sabine's voice is suddenly whispered, panicked. I have to go. Come back in four cycles. Then the sharp crack of a disconnect and silence fall, uh, fills the apartment. You step back from the terminal. What does yet again have to gain from monitoring its own members? You try to recall what you know about the gang, but you have little to go on. You think of Tishiro, Sabine's minder. His mirrored tear teardrop implants set below hard eyes. What data could they be gathering? And more importantly, where, where are they sending it? You reflexively rub your forehead, trying to think. Can you really trust Sabine? How did they come to be yet again's doctor in the first place? You think of their kindness, their care, but also that glazed look of recognition that they gave you when they first met you. That look stays in your mind as you slip back out of the apartment, glancing around as you close it up and drift into the corridors of the station, unable to shake the unpleasant sensation of being observed. Okay, I'm glad that uh, I was able to progress that because as I suspected, it was either like going to give me a, a reward. My, I think the worst case scenario in my head was like they were going to give me stabilizer, um, which by the way, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to use this. I thought it would just automatically use it, but I guess not. Uh, maybe I can use it in my host. But uh, anyway, I was worried that they were going to give me stabilizer that I couldn't use. Like it was going to um, waste a stabilizer. Uh, but I figured best case scenario and most like likely scenario was um, it was going to start something that needed to needed time to complete. And that was exactly what was what is up. So um, let's inject ourselves with some stabilizer. That's going to get us back to stable body repaired condition stabilized. And uh, we are going to end the cycle there. We're going to have to make some money in the next day. So hopefully we're hoping for good rolls, especially since there's not much data left to re recover. Um, could be better, but not awful. Um, we're gonna start by doing some unit assembly. We can turn these fours and fives into, uh, well, these are both safe. So honestly, we could even do threes and fives. But why don't we go ahead and spend some of these and make some money? Nice. Oh, neutral outcome. We were hoping for a positive outcome. 
Um, this isn't actually very good money, I will say. But I guess it's better to progress it than to do something else, I suppose. Positive outcome. Systems tech. 12 cryo. We need to get some money to, uh, um, give to our hunter. And we need, also we need to stockpile some cryo for, um, our next injection. Um, this is as risky as I'm willing to get with this. 25% negative. One in four chance of something bad happening. Neutral outcome. That, uh, couldn't have worked out better, honestly. I'm curious what the one is. 50-50, neutral or negative. I'm not a, not a fan of that. So why don't we leave that? I know we're very close on this junior tech, but, uh, you know, that's fine. So let's go to our hunter here. See Ethan at a distance shouting from the bar for more drinks. This bill isn't going to be small, is it? I guess we don't have to pay them until um, that is com that's filled up. If we could get the stupid tracker off, then I don't think we'd have to pay them. It's really annoying to me, honestly. Um, Fang, Fang is like, yeah, yeah, we, you know, like, we want to, we want justice for this thing that, you know, happened a long time ago. And I don't blame them necessarily, but like, also, you're doing all of this help for them. Like, I feel like they could have prioritized getting rid of your tracker before, you know, doing this stuff that was very likely going to get him, you know, killed. Like, let's be honest, if you're uh like just imagine in a real life situation like imagine this guy is jeff bezos for instance you know he's very much like a jeff bezos character and you know uh imagine the same situation except it's amazon that crumbled and got uh unionized against instead of uh whatever future thing that they were talking about right and you find out jeff bezos is alive and he's on the station and that he's like undercover and he doesn't want to be discovered do you really think the best idea is to publicly out him? Do you really think that's the best idea? I know that he had a plan and that definitely saves that situation slightly. It definitely helps, but honestly, th there must have been better ways of going about that. And certainly if you think that you're, you know, you're going to do that unscathed, you're painfully naive. Painfully. So anyway, those are my thoughts on that. So we've got some more data to recover. Havenage agent uh, sounds I would like to get some more Havenage uh, data if I can Havenage would be better because I almost have enough to Progress um, Caster but it looks like I'm not going to be able to do that it looks like the only data I can get is actually actually yet again Isn't that always how it goes? Again, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with these encrypted keys But I'm sure they will come in handy and I'm sure I'll be glad I had a lot of them Okay, well, that's another day, uh, done. I made as much money as I could in one day. And I think I made quite a nice bundle. Good rolls today. We made good rolls. I'm happy with that. We are starving. Oh, why did I... I should have bought food. Why didn't I do that? Okay, let's, uh... Let's pay for some food. Uh, you know what? Actually, let's not pay for some food. Instead, I'm going to come over here and do a delivery for some food. Um. Nah, never mind. It's, I think it's better to probably just pay for food. I totally forgot to, you know, um, make sure we, we weren't starving. Uh, a common mistake to make, I think. Oh, uh, looks like Harden... Uh, we're gonna have to deal with Harden. Uh, what's going on with... Ethan? 58. Okay. Oh my god, we are literally one Creo short. Ah, that sucks. Alright, well, let's go over here and progress, um... This, because we are very close. I'd like to spend this three... Because no matter, like, the only, the worst case scenario is that we get 25% negative. Like, a, a negative would be bad, I won't lie. But I'm okay with the neutral. Yeah, we got neutral, and that's fine, because that means we, 
um, have progressed this without using one of her high-end dice. So this is done. Continue. We'll see what goes, ha what, what happens here. Each shift, a crowd of would-be workers gathers outside the shipyard, each of them clinging to a four-digit number printed on receipt paper. These are their assignment numbers, and you are either called for a shift or you aren't. As you arrive, the crowd is restless and chatter rumbles through the lines. Though, for those who, like you, have graduated to the work teams, shifts are guaranteed. Having just walked out of a, mess, uh, a meeting with a supervisor where you were praised for your efforts, you feel the glow of a job well done. Yet you can't help but feel empathy for those huddled as you pass, waiting for their number to come up. You keep your head down as you leave the shipyard, feeling a little guilty as you do. Hey, sleeper, wait up. Lem's voice trembles as he shouts above the rumble of the crowd, and you turn to see him pushing through uh, Mina crying in his arms. Lem, good to see you, friend. He is breathing hard after shouldering through the waiting workers. You made the work team, uh, you made the work team. Good for you. He tries to catch his breath, stroking Mina's hair as he does. Shh, baby, uh, give me a second here. He smiles weakly at you as he comforts her, and her cries start to fade. Out of the crowd, he sets Mina down by his side, shiny streaks down both of her cheeks. As he does, you see his he is clutching an assignment number on a crumpled piece of paper. Waiting on a shift? Uh-huh, you know how it is. He puts his hands on her, sh her shoulders, and she clings to his side. Esther, who usually takes her, is sick. He stretches. I don't know, uh... A noise sounds from the entrance, a klaxon, followed by a list of numbers growing brightly on a display screen. The crowd responds instantly, pushing and pulling as people try to wade to the entry checkpoint. Lem stops and turns back towards the crowd, then glances down at the crumpled paper. That's my number. Shit. Uh, Mina. He starts patting the pockets on his gear and glancing around. Go. I'll watch her. He blinks a little, staring. Thank you, thank you. I'll, uh... He crouches to Mina. You're going to stay with our friend here, okay? They're going to keep you safe, and he stands back up. Here, take her bag. He shoves it in your hands. She's got food. She's got... Shit, I gotta go. He backs away into the crowd. Mina, I'll be back real soon, okay? Be good. Then Lem disappears into the roiling crowd, who are now trying to get into the shipyard before it locks down. I like how it, the, the art changed, and it's just Mina now. Mina stands staring, suddenly small, without Lem at her side. She fixes you with a dark-eyed look you can't quite read. Hey, Mina. She holds the stare unmoving, the two parallel tear tracks still glint on her cheeks. You okay? She sniffs and looks down. Look in the bag. You unlatch the top of the bag and see a few metal containers, fashioned from scrap components. A battered slate sits on top blinking a low battery warning, and tucked beside it is a ragged rabbit. Hand sewn. Take the rabbit. You pull the rabbit out of the bag, its long limbs waggling as you do. Mina goes to jump and grab it, but holds herself back. She stands and hugs herself, eyes on the rabbit. What's their name? Mina turns away and looks at the entrance to the shipyard. This isn't going well. Shake the rabbit. Mina jumps a little startled. She glares at you. Give her the rabbit. You hold the rabbit out, and Mina snatches it from your hand. She hugs it tightly without looking away from you. Bun Bun, she says, staring you down, ferocious despite her size. Hi, Bun Bun. You move a little closer as you speak, closing the gap. He doesn't speak, she says. She looks at you suspiciously, but her face softens a little. She waggles Bun Bun in front of you, and then walks him up your arm and onto your shoulders, where he sits. She pokes your arm a couple times. Are you really a robot? Sort of. Yeah, she thinks. Me too. Mina has more questions. Lots of questions. Questions about how you breathe or if you rest. But before long, you are talking about rabbits and what Esther, the lady who usually takes her, smells like, and whether or not fairies live in the eye's heating pipes. You pass the time like this, sitting side by side on the floor of the walkway as others pass by. Sometimes talking, sometimes drawing on the slate, sometimes playing with Bun Bun on the rabbit, uh, Bun Bun the rabbit. And this is how Lem finds you, just as both of you are starting to yawn. He is dirty and tired, but Mina leap, 
leaps up his leg and onto his arms, and he stumbles backwards. You two get on okay? He asks, trying to keep Mina from climbing onto his shoulders. More than okay. Mina shoots you a smile from Lem's arms, her suspicion gone. Well, well, well. Looks like Mina can be nice. He pokes her in the ribs, and she squeals in delight. Thank you, friend. I mean it. He gives you a warm, wide smile. I owe you. Look. He glances around. It seems like Esther, the lady who usually watches her, is going to be out for a spell. If you ever have some time, I'd really appreciate you coming down to her place in the lower, low end. He grins sheepishly, if you have the time. But now I have to take this one to eat. He plays at biting Mina, and she giggles in response. See you, sleeper. He waves, and they stumble off down the corridor, drawing gazes from passing spacers as Mina's laughter echoes down the corridor in bright squeals. New drive! Um... Side reel horizon. Oh, look at this. Side reel fit up. Your work as a junior tech has qualified you to work in the team handling this final tech fit up of the side reel horizons bridge. A vast job. That's That surely is a vast job. That is quite, quite a lot of time I'm going to have to spend on that. Not necessarily a bad thing. What do we got at Havenage? They want... They want uh, more ship mine fragments. But before we do anything else... Um, let's pay off our tab. I want to be on top of that just to show a sign of goodwill. Cool. Ah, oh, we get to continue this. I can't believe you just did that. Ethan's mocking laugh comes from along the bar. You look over to him, leaning acro uh, ac across in a pool of light, empty glasses and spilled drinks glinting around him. It's always dark in the compressor, but this cycle the place is packed, a load of spacers mixing with the locals. Usually they run. Ethan spins a glass on the table. Or they go spend their savings on some local heavy I have to put down. They don't pay. Uh, walk away. Ethan gets to his feet. The glass falls and smashes, but he doesn't seem to notice. You think that's it? One round of drinks and we are even? Sleeper? Come on. His hand comes to rest on the butt of his handgun, dangling from a chest holster. What's wrong with you? Ethan laughs hard, and the people around him turn to see what's happening. You think this is on me? I think someone in your position might have a better idea of how this all works. I'm a freelancer, Sleeper, just like you. We both signed a contract with SNARP, didn't we? The difference is that my word means something. He closes the gap, stumbling a little. What did you think? You could just run away from your contract? Your debt? You could just steal that natty little body of yours and take it for a joyride? Play human for a cycle or two? You don't understand. It's you, Sleeper, that doesn't understand. Some of us pay our debts, but it's all the harder because of idiots like you. Though I should thank you. Ethan nods, his head, head heavy, for giving me such an easy job. I'm used to outlaws, you know, real bounties. If I knew catching sad little escapees like you was so easy, I would have changed clients a ages ago. Someone shouts from the back of the bar for Ethan to shut up. He holds up a finger in that general direction without turning around. Shoot me or let me live. Oh, I see, toughening up here. He gestures wildly at the crowd. Thumbs up or thumbs down, folks. Most turn back to their drinks, no longer interested in this tire tired show. Ethan mutters insults as he walks back towards the bar. Ethan sits heavily back down on the stool and searches through his glasses for one with something left in it. The thing is, Sleeper, I can find you anywhere. It's actually wild that you haven't figured it out. That body isn't yours, and it will always betray you, no matter what. He finds a glass and downs the contents. So please go. I'll catch up with you whenever I need another. He laughs and taps the bar for a fresh drink. Look at yourself. Give it up, sleeper. I'm done teaching you for today. He settles his head on the bar and closes his eyes. I'm sick of you. Go find a job. You turn on your heel and are out. Out of the cloying dark and the sweet stench of the compressor. You walk hard and fast down the walkway. Anger driving your footfalls into the metal of the rim like hammers. We got an upgrade point. That means we can get 
I'm gonna get the uh, icebreaker. That's actually gonna pay off right away. Uh, I'm not sure what this. I guess plus two means we can like really improve our interface, which is kind of great. Um, yeah, let's have a quick look at data. Uh, if we could get. I guess I spent my Yadigan data. Again, if I could get some uh, Havenage. Uh, two and three. I have only fours. Is there only one Havenage? Oh, god damn it. Okay, there's only one Havenage. Well, I. Oh, no, there's, here's an Havenage as well, but I also can't take that. Isn't that convenient? So it, it looks like all of these are just like ones and threes, no fours. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, yep, okay. Well, that's fine. Um, why don't we go ahead and spend all of our dice rolls making some money? But uh, first, let's see what Harden here wants. It's been more than a few cycles since Feng confronted Harden, and the silence has uh, since has been noticeable. In your time with Feng, you haven't exactly found him to be reliable, but you did expect to hear the end of whatever plan he put into action. But, if he won't come to you, you think as you approach the Havenage building, then it's time to come to him. After all, he did promise to fix your tracker, and you are getting nervous. As you approach the bay doors, you see them wide open, and light pouring out of the once dark room. Stacks of servers and terminals sit outside the bay, suddenly robbed of their mystery by the bright flood lamps. A figure in Haven Havenage security fatigues steps out of the bay as you get closer, carrying a sack of hardware. Approach. As you get closer, you see the security officer taping up machines from Feng's stash with what looks like hazard tape. This isn't good. You again. Harden is there, leaning beside the bay entrance so calmly that you barely noticed him. He has a slate in his hand, an inventory of seizures scrawled across it. Predictable. Further evidence of Feng's collusions. You see another security officer come out of the bay and take notice of you. Harden. Harden pushes away from the wall and comes closer. Don't worry, sleeper. We have all the evidence we need. A confession won't be necessary. He gestures around the sack, uh, stacks of hardware. Spying on fellow Havenage members. Hoarding uh, Solheim materials. An obsession with corporate data. It speaks for itself, does it not? tells you nothing we will see what the council has to say about that he looks up at the glass roof above and the stars beyond we are the ones that provide the oxygen you are breathing the light you are seeing the systems you use every day to live out your cycles this place was hard fought for sleeper it took work diplomacy and strength to stop the eye descending into chaos after solheim collapsed not blind conviction or self-interest feng isn't selfish I know all about the background of our mutual friend, Sleeper. Don't you worry about that. His parents would be sickened by the damage he is trying to do to the institution they helped found. You see, Sleeper, we are proud of our history here. Andre Erlen and the First Union founded this place, and Havenage has wielded this, this, uh, his values into the station's very walls, I guess welded. We will never turn away the hardworking, the just, the true citizens of the Eye. Havenage aren't a gang like Yadagang. Uh, we aren't pirates like half the spacers you'll meet in the hub, or esoterics like those Haifa radicals in the Greenway. We are the backbone of this place, proud and true. We named Erlen's Eye, Sleeper. This is our station. He meets your eye. So please take your false accusations elsewhere before I decide I need that confession after all. History will catch up with you. I'm not afraid of history, Sleeper. We are making it here, cycle by cycle. He smiles. If you have any pride, you'll give up Feng the moment he contacts you. You know where to find me. With that, Harden turns his back and walks back towards his security officers, ordering them to continue the clear out. As they do, something catches your eye among one of the server stacks. A crumpled, hand-printed box of synthetic chewing gum, a penguin character grinning from the brightly colored card, and scrawled onto it, a speech bubble reading, Take me to Tambor. Take it. You carefully pocket the box, making sure no one is watching, and then turn away, just as another stack of servers is wheeled out of the, the bay, 
What have you done, Fang? And where the hell is Tambor? I know where Tambor is. Tambor is Tambor Tea House. Uh, hand in gum box. As you go to leave the Tambor Tea House, a f hand falls on your shoulder. Sleeper. Fang hisses from behind you. How did you find me? Um, the penguin. Penguin, what are you? He thinks for a second. Oh, do you mean he mimes throwing gum in his mouth? That wasn't meant for you specifically, but uh, he cringes. Look, it doesn't matter. Come, let's sit. Fang guides you down a set of stairs to one of the timbers lower levels. The tea house is stacked with curved mezzanines. Uh, mezzanines? Yeah, probably mezzanines, actually. All connected by a central atrium. The levels are filled with makeshift booths and bars, and conversation bounces busily off the metal walls. Feng sees you looking around. This place used to be a fuel tanker's main drum, hence the name. The tea house is part. Uh, the tea house part is a bit of a misnomer, though. You can get anything the eye offers from this place, but real tea isn't exactly readily available. He picks up a booth, itself fashioned from some old salvage tank or container, lined with spongy insulation foam and collapsed into it. And collapses into it, sorry. He looks around furtively. Don't suppose you've seen any Havenage types? They don't usually come out this far. Only you. Ah, not anymore, I'm afraid. Suspended without appeal. Turns out Harden has someone's ear. He grins. Doesn't bother me, though. It shows we hit a nerve back there. He picks a scrappy hand scrawled menu from the table and tosses it over. What are you drinking? Why are you so calm? You know any reason I shouldn't be? He leans in suddenly concerned, but then waves the idea away. Hold that thought, let's order first. Feng is right, the menu is ridiculous. There's at least ten different infusions, most of which you can't make out, but the paper is dominated by an extensive complement of esoteric alcohols and cocktails. Black tea is listed, without a price, as a seasonal specialty. So you ran into Harden. Was he pissed? Feng doesn't wait for an answer. That snake is so self-righteous he might actually believe that Erlen would approve of his m <laughs> uh, meritocratic bullshit. He taps on the table. If Havenage was like it should be, like it was founded to be, they would have shouted him down at any council meeting he dared to mention the true citizens. He sighs. But I guess his kind run the place now. A young woman with a vine tattoo snaking up your, her arm turns up at the booth, a slate in hand. Your order? You skim the menu, your eyes glazing over. Time to pick something. A girol. A girol. Neat. Feng taps the table to order the same, and you... She begins looking to Feng, but when she sees him, she suddenly stops. What? Feng shrinks a little. You're supposed to be working. This is your shift. He grins sheepishly. You work here? Feng waves you to be quiet. Look, Jenna, let's just say this is my break. My friend here has been through a lot. Jenna looks between the two of you. Nod. Feng also starts nodding. Two minutes, says Jenna, pointing at Feng. And only because I don't want to get dragged into whatever this is. She gestures at the table and walks off. What? Feng stretches out in the booth. You know how it is. We all have to eat. Plus, he leans in. This is the best place around here to find a person you might be looking for. Who? Remember that web of connections that Harden pinged the moment we confronted him? Those are his collaborators. And if we want to understand what a Solheim executive might be sitting getting up to on the, on the eye, those are the people we have to find. Feng is almost whispering now. There's a couple of them, I suspect, are in the low end. And, well, almost everyone in the low end comes through this place at one time or another. He brings a modified slate out onto the table. I've set this up so that when anyone with the network signature I'm looking for comes into close proximity, it'll mark them. Once they are marked, we can break through their access protocols and get at the good stuff inside. We just have to find them first, hence, hence me moonlighting as a waiter. Suddenly a smile grows across his face. Wait, I have an idea. What? 
Look, I can't cover enough of the low end on my own, and so far I've had no matches in this place. With two of us, we can cover more ground. How? Well, Fang has a hangdog look. We need to get you out and about in the low end, in, cl in close proximity to as many people and residences as, as possible. And it turns out my friend Minji needs some help with deliveries, as in Minji Express. So you already know him. Perfect. Fang places a tiny receiver on the table. This connects to my slate and runs the same marketing, uh, sorry, marking protocol if you get near any of our targets. So all you have to do is take some delivery shifts for old Minji and soon enough we'll have the place covered. Fang. Don't give me that. You think I like working here? And I thought you could use the tips. We are in this together, right? Right. Are we? Honestly, are we? Yes, you think Harden is happy to have you wandering around the place? He might have let you wander off for now, but I'm sure he has his eye on you. This is on you too. Fang slips his slate back under the, his clothes. Just head on up to Minji Express, take a delivery shift, and we'll see what shakes up. You manage to find anyone and extract any data, bring it right down here to me. They have me on double shift, so I shouldn't be able to, uh, shouldn't be hard to find. Yeah, what about my tracker, Fang? Jenna walks past, carrying a tray of drinks, and sharply catches Fang's eye. I don't think she's bringing your drink. He stands. I think it's time we call this meeting to a close. You grab the receiver from the table and slip it into a pocket. See you soon, sleeper. Stay safe, Fang adds before turning and walking off towards the bar, whistling as he does. Well, fine. More drives. Uh, derelict unit in the low end that remains unclaimed. With lots of scrap and a little work, it could be yours. I still want to do that. Disable your tracker. Help Fang chase his leads. Wait for Sabine to make contact. Bring Emphis Girol caps. Locate Harden's low end agents. We could do that. But we're this uh, honestly, this episode is running kind of long. So honestly, I know it's a weird place to, to leave it, but why don't we end this here and then I'll spend my dice in the next episode. There's a bunch of, uh, you know, plot lines that needed to kind of progress and uh, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get through a whole cycle, I'm afraid. But anyway, if you're enjoying this series, definitely hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.